glad you guys could join us tonight and um, we're all in for a treat because uh, stress is a big deal right now. And um, tonight we've got Denise Kermsey and she's gonna talk to us about uh, stress. And being a caregiver is probably one of the most stressful jobs um, there is. And, um, you know, I go in day in and day out. And people always wonder and ask me about, you know, when you're a hospice nurse, you know, it just must be hard taking care of the people. And I said, oh, no, the patients are easy. <laughs> it's the family. Yeah. And um, because th there is so much stress and, and you walk in and it's almost in most homes, it's just, there's just a level of crisis, a level mm -hmm. of just, I'm going to fall apart. And um, so there's a lot of stress out there for caregiving. And, um, you know, we don't do enough self-care. And people just think they can keep going and going and going. And um, it's just hard. It's just hard. So tonight, um, again, uh, Denise Kermsey was just um, gracious enough to, to share with us her expertise in um, uh, stress management. Um, she's a counselor and her expertise is in stress management. And um, she's a proud military daughter, wife, and mom. Um, um, they've raised two boys and they have a grandson. She's got a master's degree in counseling. Um, she's the program manager for the Family Stress Busting Program for family members of wounded warriors at Fort Sam. So that's a huge job. Mm -hmm. um, Stephen Minister and a Stephen Minister leader at Holy Trinity Catholic Church and a hospital mm -hmm. minister for Methodist Stone Oak. So she deals with this on a daily basis. And um, I think we should have one of her in every hospice uh, company in town because um, you know the stress is palpable. And, um, and with COVID in this past year that we've all gone through, I think it's just escalated a bit more. Um, there's isolation and um, you know, family members have been exposed and you know, what do we do? Yeah, so um, I hope you know, to learn something tonight to take with me and I'm sure you all will learn something to take with you. And so before we get started, um, Ed's gonna do our contemplative moment. Um, as you know, in the abode, um way of doing things um we get centered before we we move on and um ed i'll just like to let you take it away okay yes i'll be reciting a solemn a psalm from uh john philip newell uh, in the silence before time, in the quiet of the womb in the stillness of every morning is your beauty most high. At the heart of all creation, at the birth of every creature, at the center of this moment is your splendor most high. Rekindle in us the sparks of your beauty that we may be part of the splendor of this moment. Rekindle in us the sparks of this beauty that of this moment and we, be, we may be part of the blazing splendor which burns at the heart of each moment. Namaste. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. You're welcome. So um, I will go ahead and uh, let you start, Denise. Um, just remember, everyone, uh, this is a small group. So um, we'll just do questions um, during the presentation, if that's OK, Denise. And, um, and then also, if you don't want to speak up and you want to put them in the chat box, we'll, we'll go over those at the end. And um, so. This is our time. Enjoy. Okay. Well, 
I thank you. I'm honored um, that I was asked to come talk to you today about a very important topic, which is taking care of yourself. Um, it's very important to take care of yourself and live your best life while you care for your care receiver. So a um, little intro was about putting on your mask first. Can y'all hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, putting on your mask first. Uh, why do the airlines say to do that? Um, they're smart. They know that if you put your mask on first, you're going to receive that life-giving oxygen. And that's going to help you to be able to think. It's going to help you to be able to breathe and you're going to get the energy that you need so that you can physically take care of the person next to you. If you don't do that, and you try to take care of the person next to you first before putting on your mask, then they know that you're gonna be losing oxygen as time goes on. And that's gonna affect your mental capacity, your ability to think critically, your ability to react physically, okay? So you need to put your mask on first. You need to take care of yourself. Um, I really could talk for hours <laughs> about this topic, but I don't have hours. I've got a little bit of time, so I'm really just going to jump into the nuts and bolts of it. Um, so I had a lot prepared, but I think um, I'm trying to pick out the most important things that um, I can think of. And, you know, one of the things you need to know is that you as a human being, as a person, you're made up of four different parts, your body, mind, your spirit, and your emotions. So none of those stand alone. They all make you who you are. If one of those parts of you suffers, the other parts will suffer as well. So, you know, if you, if you have some very negative thoughts, then it's gonna affect your emotions. It's also, you know, if you're thinking, um, if you're angry or, well, let's just say if you're sad, then you're going to start, you're thinking sad thoughts or worried thoughts. It's going to make you feel sad and concerned. You maybe go into a depression and physically you're not going to have any energy and you could also become ill. I mean, that's how powerful your mind is. So they're all connected and you have to nourish every single part of your personhood. So I'm just gonna talk about each one of the four parts and I hope that you gather one thing at least from each part that you can implement into your life, okay? Um, so I'm gonna give you some tools and it's up to you whether or not you're gonna use them, okay, your choice. First thing I want to talk about is a spiritual because I think it's most important. If we have our spiritual life, if we nurture it, it's going to help us. It's so powerful and um, it's going to help us in the other areas as well. Um, I truly believe that um, God helps us to do things that we can't do ourselves, that we may not have within us. We may not have um, the courage or the determination or the strength to do something, but God can give us grace to do it. And similarly, whatever your belief, um, that connection to something that is outside of you, that is greater, that is more powerful, um, is so important because that is going to give you the energy that you need. That is going to give you the strength that you need. That is going to give you the courage. It's going to give you the peace. It's going to give you the grit, the determination, the fortitude, and the perseverance. And it's going to give you the hope that you need to take that next step. So find some time in the day to practice and to nourish a part of you, even if it's five minutes, you know, maybe even before you get out of bed, if you just spend five minutes in, you know, trying to connect to your spiritual side, um, that will help a lot. Um, some of the things that you can do to connect to your spiritual side are prayer or meditation. 
You can draw, paint, sculpt. If you like music, listen to music. If you like to write, journal. Do what it is. You know yourself. Not, not everybody likes music. Personally, I'm not an artist. I'm not going to draw. But I, I love music. Um, and I love to pray. And so those would be my go-tos, okay? Take the time. Because I promise you, in the paradoxical spiritual world, you think you might be losing time? By putting aside some time to pray or meditate or do some of these things, I promise you, you will gain time. Somehow you'll get everything done. And if you don't believe me, do an experiment and try it for a week. I always love to tell people, just experiment, try it. See if it doesn't work, okay? Um, so we have to move on. And we're going to talk now about our mind and controlling our thoughts. Well, how do you control your thoughts or your thoughts, right? But you can. The first thing you need to do is you need to recognize your negative thoughts. And we all have them, especially during times of stress. Um, I am, there's a whole list of negative thought patterns that have been put out. Um, I don't have time to go over all of them, but I'm just going to, highlight the top three that I think are the top ones. You know yourself and not everybody has the same negative thoughts. Everybody's gonna go have their go-to is a little different. So are you a person that's gonna make a mountain out of a molehill? So say for instance, you go to the doctor and they say, oh look, you have this mole and we've gotta do a biopsy on it. Do you think immediately, oh my God, I'm gonna die. Or do you think, well, he's going to do a biopsy and I'm scared, but I'm going to wait and see what happens with the test results and then I'll deal with it from there. Okay, that's two different thoughts and they're going to lead to two different emotions and physical reactions as well. Um, do you tend to ruminate? That's me. <laughs> I'm a ruminator. And my thoughts can go round and round and round and round in a do loop, right? How do I know that, that I'm in a negative thought pattern? I know for myself that I start to feel down. I start to get more blue. And um, I can just feel my mood going down. And when that happens, I ask myself, what am I thinking? What is that thought that's affecting me? And you can think of it like a garden. Your mind is a garden, flowers, that's what God created it to be. But you know how weeds are, you know, the little weed that pops up and then it just grows so fast. And then it starts to take, you know, its course through the vegetation. And before you know it, it can choke out the flowers, it can choke out all the beauty if you let it. So you don't want that to happen. So try to pull the weed, try to get it out as soon as you see it, the sooner the better, okay? Um, all or none thinking is the other one that's big. Do you find yourself saying you always do this? You never do that. You never think of me. You never help me. Well, is that really true? Is anybody always doing something or never doing something? I think not. They might a lot of times do something or not do something, or they might sometimes do something or not, or maybe just today they did something that <laughs> bothered you. But for the most part, they're supportive and they're good people, okay? So try to identify that and then you can change it. So here's the trick. Three steps. Identify the thought. Say the word stop. Now, if you're alone in the room, you can scream it. If you're not, don't do that. <laughs> but in your head, you got to scream it and say it very forcefully, stop. Okay? I mean it. But the key is number three. You can't stop there. You got to replace it. You got to replace it with something more positive. So I love short little verses. Um, I love 
Bible verses, um, just one, just one scriptural verse that, that um, nurtures you or one go-to line that's really easy to remember, like Nike's just do it, or <laughs> um, I don't know, um, whatever your favorite go-to line is that motivates you and, and lifts you up and write them down so that you don't forget it and then you can go to it. But it's gotta be something that can be your mantra. The other big thing is, so sometimes we just have this belief system about somebody or something, and um, it can be negative. We might just say, you know, they're just, they're not on my side. They're not supporting me. And um, you might want to look at reframing that. It's called reframing or looking at it from a different perspective. Because I promise you, I promise you, there is more than one perspective in any situation you're in. For instance, um, I just uh, not long ago was upset with my dad. Because I felt something, you know, I felt like he wasn't um, really being supportive of me. And um, for a few days, I kind of ruminated in that and I was feeling pretty negative. And I mentioned it to my brother and he came up with another um, possibility for why my dad said and did what he did. And I went, well, actually, that's a possibility. My way was a possibility for sure. But so was his idea. So I chose to give the benefit of the doubt. And, you know, by choosing that, it made me feel better. I mean, I don't know the real story, but, you know, by making a choice like that, it lifts you up. You know, as long as it's a possibility, don't delude yourself. You're not going to make yourself believe something that's not true. But if it's a real possibility, choose to hold on to that because you just never know. Um, and then um, I think, oh, yeah, I didn't want to miss this. So, um, you know, hopefully you have somebody that you can talk to somebody that you trust, um, somebody that's honest with you, my best friends, my go-to. Um, if you don't have that person, um, I, I, I'm not giving resources because I've been told you'll get resources, but I have one for you. And that's Stephen Ministry, because I was a Stephen minister and a leader. And I promise you, in San Antonio, there's Stephen ministers in so many parishes. Um, and Stephen Minister is a person that volunteer will walk with you um, during the difficult times. Um, they're just someone that can support you, you can cry with, you can laugh with, you can, you know, tell what's going on and they'll listen and they'll be there for as long as you need them. And so um, it's great, you know, when you're in a lot of stress or you're having a tough time and you need that person, maybe someone outside the family or your friends, that is a resource. So if you don't belong to a parish, you can reach out to your local parish and they'll probably be able to refer you. Okay. Um, moving on to the next part are your emotions. And your thoughts lead directly to your emotions. What you think is what you are going to feel. So if you're thinking something negative, you're going to feel a negative emotion. If you're thinking something positive or hopeful, but realistic, you're going to feel a more positive emotion. Okay. So you need to nurture your emotions. Um, some of the things you can do is use humor. I love to laugh. One of my favorite movies is Father's Day. When I'm really down, I pop that one in my DVD and I watch it and laugh. And you feel better because it produces endorphins, which make you feel better. You now, or you have somebody that's really funny, pick up the phone and have a chat with them, you know. Um, try to look at the humorous side of things or read a funny book. Um, having a social network is very important too. Even if you just have one friend, um, once again, you could go back to Stephen Ministry, but you want to have someone 
you know, that you can call and talk to and maybe even do things with on occasion when you can get out. And then respite care. And um, I'm sure y'all have talked about respite care and you know about that, but use it. You know, don't feel guilty. Use it once a month or whatever. Um, so you can treat yourself to get out. You deserve to get out and just do something fun. And okay, I know we were just talking about COVID spreading and all that, but you can use it to go for a walk in the park, <laughs> you know, um, or to do something, you know, nice um, for yourself, okay? Um, so before I go on to the last part, and I'm just talking fast because of time, I don't wanna go over my time. Um, the last part is your physical self. And it's so important to nurture that, but that one really takes time, that and the spiritual. So I wanna give you a few time tips. First of all, know yourself and know what's gonna work for you, okay? So don't try to do what works for someone else, do what's gonna work for you. And then you have to set your mind, you have to determine that you're gonna do it. So just like nurturing every part of your being, all four parts, determine that you're going to do it. Just do it. <laughs> um, and then be creative. So, you know, play tricks with time. Maybe you have to wake up early. Wake up early. Maybe you have to, you know, while, while it's nap time for your care receiver or it's a quiet time, you use that for yourself or you stay up later, not too late, but, you know, a little bit. Um, and then, shoot, everyone has to go to the bathroom. <laughs> they just do. And so you can pray in the bathroom. You <laughs> can do that. Or when you're showering, you can meditate. You know, you can do, use that time, combine it when you're doing mundane chores, you know, the things that are um, not so fun. You, that's a good time to pray and meditate. It's also a good time to uh, do some fun things. Um, so you can combine things. So I, I like to walk and pray. You can shower and visualize. You can do mundane tasks and listen to music. You don't want to watch me clean my house. I hate to clean my house, so I play games. I make little time challenges and try to beat them. And I listen to music. And I vacuum and I dance and I sing. It's not pretty and it doesn't sound good. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then make segments, okay? If you think you can chunk out, you know, 30 minutes for exercise or to pray, then do that. If you can, that's okay. Then do 15 minutes in the morning and 15 in the afternoon. If you can't swing that, then do five minutes, you know, every hour. Give yourself a five minute break to just do a little prayer or do a little exercise or alternate, okay? But, but do it, just be creative and figure out how you can make the time. So now I'm going to talk about the physical part and that does take time and you got to carve it out, but it's good for you because it creates those endorphins again and those make you feel good and they give you energy. I always say energy creates energy. Mm -hmm. So you think you're depleting yourself. You're not, you're just creating more energy for yourself. Get out in the fresh air even during COVID, that fresh air is the healthiest thing you can do. Um, just take a walk around the block, you know, if you, if that's what it is. So um, get into a routine. You got to get into a routine. Um, that's the only way that you're going to sustain it. Um, do what you like. Don't do what I like. <laughs> I like to walk. Um, and I like to bike and ski and hike, but that may not be your thing. Maybe you like to swim. Maybe you like weights. Um, maybe you like boxing or ballet or dance classes or, you know, what is it that you like? And it can be anything as long as you're moving, you're working out. 
If you can't get out, still no excuse, no excuse. Turn your living room into a workout room. Make a little space on the floor, put in a DVD. They've got a million of them. They've got apps. I mean, COVID has really made the exercise world go online. So get those and, and lay on the floor and do your exercises. And uh, you can get milk cartons and make them weights, you know, be creative. So you can sit in a chair and do exercises. They have chair exercises. So there's really no excuse. I broke my leg last year. And after I, you know, I had to recover for a couple of weeks because it hurt, you know, when I was in pain. But once I was able to get up, I got in my wheelchair, we rented one, and I rolled it through, I live in an apartment, and I rolled it through the apartment complex, and I <laughs> pretended like I was, you know, in a race, and I <laughs> rolled down the hallways, and then I got on my crutches, and we had a five-story parking garage, and I crutched all the way up and all the way down. Hello, and welcome to Yoga with Adrian. Sorry. <laughs> so... You just, you know, be creative, make it up, but do it. Um, have an accountability partner. If you can't motivate yourself, and it's so hard, especially in the beginning, once you get into the practice, you're going to crave it, I promise. But in the beginning, it's hard to get started. Have an accountability partner. When I had my first son, I, I just sat there and I felt so yucky and gross, and I, but I couldn't motivate myself to work out. And so I asked my neighbor, who was a big runner. And so what she would do is she'd knock on my door. I'd put my son in my little jogging stroller and we'd walk for one block together. And then she was a fast runner and I wasn't. So she'd leave me, but she got <laughs> me out there. Now I'm going to work out. Okay. Or... You know, maybe you just need someone to pick up the phone and say, time to work out now, <laughs> Susan, time to work out, Margaret, come on, Edward. So, okay, so um, whatever works for you, but just do it. Okay, really quick, I want to talk about eating right. Um, oh, okay, that's boring, I know. Chicken, protein, veggies, fruit, water, water, water. Try not to eat, you know, the white flour and the processed sugars. I know that's not fun. And then you go, but Denise, you know, and it takes a lot of time. Oh no, oh no, I've mastered this one too. So here's my trick. I don't like to eat right because I think it's boring. I like the spice of life. So for five days a week, I eat well. So I'll eat my chicken, you know, and I'll eat, I'll, I'll keep my calories down. I'll keep my fat down. I won't eat any bread. I have arthritis and, and carbs are really bad for arthritis. And so I cut all that out, but guess what? On Saturday and Sunday, I don't even care. I just do whatever I want and I live it up. But I promise you, by the time Monday rolls around, I'm ready to eat right again because I don't even feel that good. I actually feel better during the week when I'm eating right, but I still like to have fun. So that's my trick. Um, and one of the other things is H-E-B. So there's no excuse on the preparation. I know it takes time, but they make their little, little meals and they are so good. They're low cal and low fat. I keep mine under 500 calories and do the low fat. They are so good. And mm -hmm. all you have to do is pop them in the oven. Now they're a little pricey though. That's the downside. So, um, or you can do, it's all the rage today. Every, a lot of the young kids, they just like spend one day a week and they cook piles of food and they cook things in their crock pots and stuff. And then they bag it all up and for the week and then you just pop it in and you can do it so whatever works for you or you might have other tricks so that's good um i also want to talk about supplements so take your vitamins but i'm going to tell you something when covid started um i learned about d3 zinc and vitamin c and that's been my prophylactic against COVID. 
it is it is a help to keep you healthy along with the other things I'm talking about because you got to do you got to be exercise and sleep and all that but those three things now we're d3 deficient as a nation we are d3 deficient I have fibromyalgia I usually have a crash crashing period where I feel horrible several times a year I noticed just recently that I haven't crashed one time since I started, since COVID started, because I started D3. So I'm not saying it is, I'm not saying it isn't, but I sure feel great. I sure mm -hmm. feel great. And they're all natural, okay? And they're cheap and you can just get them at CVS. So I just, that's my little tip. Um, almost done here. Sleep. Try to get eight hours of sleep. Okay. Try not to look at your devices, your TV, your computer, your phone, those kinds of things, because they emit an unnatural light and it disturbs your sleep actually. So at least a half an hour before you go to bed, try to do something more um, calming. Like if you can take a bubble bath or read a book, have a nice soft light, a soft light, not one of those bright things that, that you know, just are, are um, annoying. <laughs> so a soft, bright, soft light and then, um, you can actually have, and I learned this in my fibro class, three ounces, no more, no more, but three ounces of wine, and it will actually relax you. If you have more, it does the opposite, and it, it'll wake you up in the middle of the night. You won't sleep, but three ounces, if that relaxes you, okay? So try to keep it calm in the evening and try to keep it just very nice and pleasant, um, and I'm just going to end with my little, a little story. So you are body, mind, spirit, and, and emotion. Okay. So is your care receiver. They need all the things that you need. Now it's hard because you're always taking care of them, but I'm going to tell you a little story. So as uh, it's just a stereotype, but <laughs> I didn't really get along with my mother-in-law very well. I've been married 28 years and it's been a contentious relationship. But as I grew older, more mature, you know, I started working on it and I wanted to improve it. And so towards the end, she also tried, you know, to improve the relationship. Um, so I found out um, in January um, so she had cancer and she ended up having to go into the hospital in January. Um, my father-in-law, who's 93 years old, said she was very healthy when she went in. But as COVID, he never could see her. Mm -hmm. Well, we got a call from the hospital and we found out she was actually dying and he didn't realize it. Mm -hmm. So we ran out to Arizona and we found out the, the situation and we're like, no. We're going to bring her home because that was the only way that he could see her. And so we got her home on hospice and um, she was there, but she was in so much pain. So she was very heavily sedated to the point where she taught the day she came in and then she never said another word mm -hmm. because of the sedation. And so one night I got my rosary and I sat down in the room. And I prayed with her. I said, Missy, we're going to pray. And we prayed. And then I put on my praise and worship music. And I know she didn't really probably listen to that, but I did. And they were all beautiful songs about heaven and all so inspirational. And poor Mitzi, I, I can't listen to music and not sing. So she had to listen to me sing. But, you know, they can hear you. And I knew she was with me. And then I'm like, okay, Mitzi, enough of that. Now let's party. So she loved big bands. She loved to put on shows and stuff like that. That's, that was her thing. So, and I love big band. So I put on my soundtrack and we sang and we had so much fun. I know she was having fun. I had a ball. And so the next day she actually passed away. 
I have no, no regrets, none. Every time I think of Mitzi now, even though our relationship was contentious, I feel so happy and so good inside when I think about her because we had our time and we really, we really just shared these moments. So I am telling you, please, please, please take care of yourself. You have to take care of yourself, but take care of your care receiver too in those ways. Share things with them. Read books together. Pray together. Meditate together. Um, you know, um, put on nice lighting and listen to music or sing and dance. What's your thing? What do you guys love to do? Go do it. Live it up. Be together once a week. Make a special night or a special day where you guys do what you love to do. And don't worry about COVID. I know you're worried about them getting sick or catching something. Please, you can still be creative. Susan, go outside. Go outside. When I broke my leg, every single night, my husband would push me down the river walk because that's where we lived. And everybody found knew us by the end. But he pushed me, and that's what I live for. It is what I live for, my nightly walk, okay, in the wheelchair. So, you know, do it. Go with them. What do you like? Hey, you guys want to take a trip, but you're afraid of all the people? Well, there's cabins in the woods. Go to a cabin. There's, like, beaches that hardly anybody goes to. I bet the rooms are really cheap. You know, go to the beach. Go do something. Please, please share with your care receiver. So in the end, I'm military. We were stationed in Korea, military family. And the Korean forces had a saying with the, mil the, the American forces. It was, kapshi, kapshi da. Kapshi, kapshi da. You know what it meant? We go together. Okay. Mm -hmm. So hold hands and go together through life, okay? I promise you, you won't regret it. Thank you so much. Great. Wow, thank you so much, Denise. That was fabulous. Thank you, Denise. I had fun. <laughs> Lots of great information. Good tips. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. I hope, um, Terry, that there's something that you might take from each part of yourself that you can use. You know, we, you know, a lot of this information that you gave um, is something that, you know, you know, I can create and give to my, my families and give them suggestions to, to take care of themselves because, yeah, you know, there's, was great advice and, and, you know, things that we can all do for sure. Um, there was a question about the Stevens minister. Um, you said most churches have a Stevens minister. If you don't belong to a church, if you called your local church? Um, yes, I think you could call your local church, but one of the other things you could do is to Google them online, mm -hmm. Stephen Ministry, okay? And then it will come up. I think there's a, uh, a number that, that can refer you as well if you don't belong to a parish. And if your parish doesn't have it, they might be able to guide you towards one that does. Mm -hmm. And there's no cost? No, no cost whatsoever. Just a little bit of your time, but it's worth it. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. Thank you. Yeah. Does anybody else have any questions or comments or tip, other things to share about your body, mind, or spirit that you like to do to nurture it? What was the name of the funny movie you watch? <laughs> it's called Father's Day. Father's Day. And you know what? It's an old one. It has Robin Williams and, um, uh, oh, shoot. And blanking on his name. Oh, he's so funny. Um, I'm blanking on his name. That's anyway, okay. 
um it's so funny and they're like two opposite guys um it's just oh, it's, uh, billy crystal yeah okay. billy crystal thank, thank you, you. <laughs> i googled it <laughs> yeah that was very fast good yeah that's a great movie <laughs> i was reading that reading something recently and now I can't remember the author, but he was saying, you know, just the, the importance of living in the present. And when we wake up and we start dwelling on past pain and past hurts right away, we're starting the day, we're starting our day in the past. We have to stop doing that. We have to stop. <laughs> yeah. And just stop. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I think yeah, my I think. is um, like when I'm at a stoplight, instead of like, oh, I'm sitting here, I'm doing nothing. I will just start naming things I'm thankful for. Oh, that's and a like that. And sometimes yeah. I'm thankful that I've got a stoplight, you know, because I can just take a moment and take a drink of my drink or, um, you know, and just realize, I, you know, it's I'll get going, you know, take a breath. Yeah, yeah, um, and 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 I would add to that um, one of the things I kind of cut out, but um, make a list of some of the things that are positive about you of your gifts, because I, I cut it out, but um, but I I was gonna talk a little bit about hard people, people that are, you know, tough to deal with in your life. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't matter what they think. So you need, I promise you, you guys are there, you're taking care of your care receiver, you're doing it. You're doing it. That takes a very special person. Not everyone would step up to the plate. So think of the qualities that it takes to do what you do. Mm -hmm. It takes mm -hmm. determination. It takes love. It takes caring and fortitude and courage and strength and all those things. I, I can't name them all, but y'all are my heroes because you are there. You are there. You're doing it day in, day out. So, I'm sure everyone has that negative person in their life because I don't think any of us can escape them. <laughs> but uh, you don't let them ever, ever um, steal your your joy or your um, your worthiness. So write it down so you can have a go to in your very down days. And one of the other things I didn't say was um, we are all human and we all fall. And that means, you know, sometimes we lose it and we yell mm -hmm. or we cry, we burst out in tears or something. And we're so sorry, we didn't mean it, but like, it's just a bad day. So don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up. Apologize where you need to pick yourself up and dust yourself off and keep going, forgive yourself. And, you know, just um, know that you are doing a job and every human being is gonna go through times when they're just not, they're a little less than their wonderful selves, okay? So it's okay to do that. And also, even for Edward there, I, I forgot to talk about crying. Um, please, it's okay. Actually, it's a gift from God. I don't know, have any of you ever just had a good old fashioned cry, but at the end, you feel like a million pounds are lifted off of you? Anybody? Wait, wait. <laughs> it's okay. It's good to cry. And um, think of that and, as a weakness. Yeah, is exactly, and that's why I wanted to mention it because it's not a weakness, not even for Edward. It's not a weakness for you, Edward. Even men, because we all feel 
so many emotions and it's so hard you know it's a great release you know i i curl up sometimes when i have a relationship with my father in heaven and i just let it all out sometimes i yell sometimes i cry i just tell him what's on my mind because he's never going to leave us alone we are not walking this journey alone, no matter what you believe. No matter what you believe, you are loved. You are loved. So my youngest son was diagnosed with Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, and he had to have, he ended up having two ablations. By the way, he's gonna be a fighter pilot in the Air Force now. So it's a real miracle story. Yeah. But yeah. at the time I didn't know that. I mean, I thought, you know, I didn't know what his future was going to be. And I had some really down days. And one day I was having a particularly down day and to the store. And there was a girl behind me and she just said, hi. She just said, hi. And do you know how that made my day? And do you know why that made my day? Because I knew that God was looking out to me that day and I chose to see it so you have to open your eyes you got to see he helps you in little tiny ways he doesn't really take it away from you but he'll help you in little ways by maybe a phone call when you're having the worst day or a little high or I don't know something nice just happens to you so see it take it in Take it in, choose to take it in and choose to allow it to comfort you. Okay. Because that's how he that's how he works with us. That's how he says, I'm here. I'm walking with you. You're not alone. You're never alone. It's so true. I put in the comments. Uh, a link to a yoga that I was doing during COVID when we shut down abode briefly. And um, after lunch, my mom would take a nap so I'd get my yoga mat out. But I had a little video camera where I could monitor her. And then I had a, a little baby monitor so I could hear for the bell that she'd ring when she needed me. And I would just be like almost to the end of the yoga session, so excited about the last bit of it. And I could see her stir. I'm like, oh, just hold on. Just hold on. <laughs> let, me, let me just finish it. Five more minutes. And then the bell rang. Oh, almost did it. <laughs> okay. Got to go take care of her. Yeah. But that did help me every day to try to get that in somehow. Let's see if I can beat the clock to get, to get it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, my yoga really improved during that stretch. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Does anybody have a little exercise program that they do? I do. I do. And I walked on the river walk as often as I could during the time my husband was, was in hospice. Beverly was his hospice nurse. Um, I had some caregivers uh, at the end. I had them 10 hours a day and I did 14 hours, um, my daughter and I, at, in the evenings. And there were some really difficult days. And one of, the, one of the most difficult days I had, I went walking and I couldn't, I just couldn't find comfort anywhere. And a friend of mine, um, oh, I went to her house and she said, she rolled out um, some wrapping paper. And of course the, the underside of the wrapping paper was white. And she gave me some crayons and some colors and she, she laid it out on her counter and she said, just scribble, just <laughs> scribble. And so it was the movement, you know, of your arms and it was such a release. I couldn't cry. I couldn't scream. I couldn't, but it was a release and it really helped me. It sounds strange, but it really did work. And I found that exercising was good. And the, the, one of the problems I had was sleeping. I don't know if you all um, had that experience, but that was one of the most difficult things for me. Um, I would try Benadryl, but that made me groggy and they, the doctor gave me some Xanax and that made me more anxious and I did not like that. And so what I found is, you know, um, alcohol, you know, having a drink in the evenings and it would put me to sleep. Yeah, that's really it did not keep me to sleep, but it helped me 
relax enough that I could get to sleep. And so that was the only thing that I could really do. And I, I was very careful about how much I, I, uh, that I consumed. Yes. The best thing that I worry about with, care, with being a caregiver, I mean, there are some things that you kind of resort to for comfort, you know, eating, alcohol, drugs, you know, those are the kinds of things that, that I think that they're facing. And I don't think that we talk about that enough because a lot of people I know have resorted to those things and, you know, you see what's happening, but you know, that's their comfort. That's, that's what they have to do for the time being. Mine was comfort eating. And so after Wade died, I joined Weight Watchers and uh, got back on track with exercise and diet and, and all that. But during the time, you know, I just thought, you know what, if I feel like eating fried chicken and mashed potatoes and gravy, that is what I am eating today. And it, and it helped. And it was um, fun to be a nurse because when I would go to her house, she always had something baked. So <laughs> this nurse gained a few pounds during that time too. <laughs> I did, you know, I believed in feeding the staff. You know, if they were here and we were going to eat, we would all sit down together. And I, I've understood from the staff that I was unusual, um, but I felt like that that was really important. And when Beverly came, I knew that she was, you know, coming very soon around her, a lot of times her lunch hour, she would be busy on her lunch hour. So I'd pack up soup and a scone or crackers or something and send it with her because, you know, you got to take care of each other. And she was taking care of us and doing a spe spectacular job of it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I think that's a very important um, topic, though, is, you know, abusing drugs and alcohol and those kinds of, you know, those are the self soothing things that they can get out of hand. You know, and I heard you say that, you know, I think your thought was, if I want fried chicken, by God, I'm gonna have fried chicken. <laughs> right. Okay. But um, yeah, that's, that's also, I think maybe I'm working with people or talking to them or helping them to think, you know, could you replace that thought, you know, and could you find something a little healthier to replace some of that, you know, that would still be comforting though. Like that's the key. Like you gotta make it, you gotta make it um, easy and, and, um, and still comforting. So, um, yeah, that, that's important. I think that's an important topic. Mm -hmm. I drink warm milk and that helps me to sleep. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Warm milk. Milk. I think uh, that I have heard that, that that's a very good thing to do. I can't bring myself, Mar <laughs> Margaret, to drink it. <laughs> well, I, I was raised on a farm, so I love milk. So I very fortunate. I drink a lot of milk. That's <clears throat> great. That's great. I'm glad you found your sleep aid. Yes. Now, if it's really bad, I'll take in a leave, but I'm very careful. I don't take it regularly. I take it when it's a really bad night, mm -hmm. but it really works a leave PM. Okay. Oh. Um, I was just wondering if you'd say something about the medication that our um, our people are, are taking at this stage of life. Sometimes I wonder, does the medication have such bad side effects that it changes their personalities sometimes? You mean for the dying? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, of course, there are um, side effects to all the drugs we, we do use. But, um, you know, at the very end, um, my answer to that would be no. Um, you know, mostly at the very end, if we're giving them, we're treating a symptom, whether it's pain or um, restlessness, agitation, um, or they, they can't breathe. Mm -hmm. And so um, those are very helpful. Um, but, you know, sometimes the painkillers, the anxiety medicines can make them very sleepy. Yeah. And um, 
can make them confused. Yeah. What about somebody though that is very angry? Yeah. Where do you even begin? Yeah, a lot of times I treat, we will treat anger with antidepressants. Um, okay. I had a patient recently, <clears throat> the, the husband's got heart failure and most of my visit was focused on an argument that they're having and they're getting very heated with each other. And she does all the talking, he's the patient. And um, you know, he, he just can't get a word in. And she talks about how he just picks at her and he yells at her and he's shouting at her. And, um, and so we put him on an antidepressant and made those moods kind of even out. So we didn't have the lows or the highs, they just kind of evened out. And, um, and it's helped a lot. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Okay, any other questions? I have a, a comment, something that also um, is very helpful to me is my connections with friends. Um, that has, th this morning I was very disappointed um, and stressed about news I received. And um, I did the, the stop, you know, thinking how you're thinking and you need to adjust and and then um, my friends were moving on and thinking of solutions and I still wanted to pout and sulk. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I had to do the, what Denise mentioned, stop. And I recognized there was some, some grief. I had to let go of some things. Um, but continuing on in my sulky pouty mood was not helpful. And um, so I, I looked to my friends and it's like, okay, you gotta do what they do and, and uh, move roll, on. roll with the punches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good for you. So did it help? Yes, yes it did. Yes, Good. It did. I would just like to make one comment and say thank you so much for the example you gave about the weed uh, and how the weed chokes out the flowers. Somehow that has become, as I thought about it, it just won't go away. And it made me think about the fact that negativity, which I am all too familiar with, um, is like a big old weed or a big old noose around my neck choking me. Yeah. Yeah. Great visual. What a great visual. Thank that you. is a good. Thank you. You know, it's funny because I actually heard that from a professor way back when I got my master's degree and I've never forgotten it. Yeah. It was so powerful to me. Yeah. So I like that analogy as well. I'm glad it rang. Um, it helped you. It was probably something you'll never forget. That's right. Thank you. Not good. Good. So. Well, everyone, it's 730. That means mm. our, our time is up. And oh my goodness, Denise, thank you, thank you. Yes, yeah. yes, thank you. Wonderful. We're I happy. so enjoyed it. Happy again. <laughs> oh, I'd love to. I, I've enjoyed all of you and God bless you. Y'all are my heroes. Keep doing what you're doing. Stay strong. As young kids say today, embrace the suck. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it you can do it i'll be praying for y'all okay thank you for what you thank do thank you that was really good thank you denise thank you all right y'all next week is our last session of a of a bode three um we're gonna have um let's see it'll be life after loss oh you know not life after loss it's going to be the final, the final goodbye. Final goodbye. That's it. And Mary will be one of our, our speakers. And Hal, and so it's going to be a, a tremendous night because we're, we're going to hear those stories and, um, and see how people have gotten through this. Yeah. Mary Rogers and Hal Smarkle. Mary, Mary cared for her husband and Hal cared for his wife. And it will be moderated by um, a Christus. Loretta. 
Greta Mann, Greta she's Mann. one of our practitioners. Yeah, so it'll be a really nice discussion. Yeah. So. All right. I will send a survey out tomorrow morning. I didn't last week, I'm sorry, but I will tomorrow morning. So you'll have a survey about tonight's session. Okay, great, thank you. All right, well, have a wonderful week, everybody. We'll thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Take care.